Welcome to this week's Archaeological News, where I bring you the latest and most interesting headlines from the world of ancient history. My favourite story at the moment is the discovery of a burial cave in Israel that has remained untouched for more than 3,000 years. I also discuss donkey domestication, a lost megalithic Maltese temple, stone jars in India, the Neolithic diet in Scotland, ancient manure and animal dung. untouched burial cave found in the Parmahim National Park, Israel. An intact burial cave dating back to the Bronze Age has been found in Parmahim National Park, Israel. The cave was discovered near the beach when a mechanical digger was carrying out works for the Nature and Parks Authority. A hole was accidentally made in the roof of the cave revealing its contents, with archaeologists then lowering themselves into it to investigate further. Dating back 3,000 years, the cave was in use at the same time as the famous pharaoh Ramesses II reigned in ancient Egypt. Grave goods found in the cave include cooking pots, oil lamps, bronze vessels, jars, bowls, arrowheads and spear tips. Tiny vessels were also found which would have contained precious substances. The grave goods originated in a variety of places around the Mediterranean, including Cyprus and Lebanon, which shows that whichever community created the burial site was trading extensively outside of the area. It's extremely rare for such a site to be found completely intact, having been sealed for thousands of years. Archaeologists aren't sure which settlement the cave belonged to, but it's possible that any any village nearby could have been lost to the sea. The cave may have belonged to a family or extended family group and the arrowheads and spear tips suggest they may have been warriors. Unfortunately the human skeletal remains were not well preserved so no DNA can be extracted from them. DNA study finds donkey domestication first took place in Africa. A recent study published in the journal Science analysed the DNA of 238 ancient and modern donkeys to find out when and where they were first domesticated. Up until now, not a great deal was understood about the history of donkeys compared to that of horses. The study included genome panels from 207 modern donkeys, 31 ancient donkeys and 15 wild equids. It found that donkeys were domesticated in a single event in Africa around 7,000 years ago, before spreading into Eurasia in 2500 BCE. There was then further divergence within these lineages. Eventually, the donkey populations in Europe and the Near East backbred into African populations. An analysis of Roman donkeys in France showed that the Romans inbred them to create larger, stronger animals that were more useful to their economic prosperity and military power. Lost megalithic Maltese temple to be recovered. The Neolithic temple known as Shrub Lagine was first excavated between 1914 and 1915. At that time, the archaeologists recorded that much of the temple had been lost in the preceding millennia due to coastal erosion. No further work was done on the site and eventually it became considered as lost. Later experts concluded that the structure's precarious location on the edge of not only a cliff, but an undercut cliff within the Nature Trust Park Shrub La Gine may have led to its loss in the sea below. However, surveying work between 2012 and 2015 revealed that the temple remains were still there and also identified another megalithic structure nearby. Now a collaboration has been announced between the Ministry for the National Heritage, the Arts and the Local Government, Heritage Malta and Nature Trust. They are excavating what remains of the temple with the plan to save it, possibly relocate it and open it up to the public. More huge stone jars discovered in India. A study published in the journal Science Direct details the discovery of giant stone jars and circular flat stones in Saipung Forest in Meghalaya, India. Many similar sites have been found in the past across India and Indonesia, with a recent paper in April 2022 discussing the 65 sandstone jars in the Assam area of India. The latest paper on the phenomenon is based on fieldwork that took place in February 2020 in the Saipung Forest, where seven jar sites were identified. The jars and circular stones vary in size and shape, but the type of location is consistent with them mostly being found on the flat summits of undulating hills. Sheds of pottery, 
charred human bones and a glass bead were also found at the sites, and some of the slabs were decorated with anthropomorphic and zoomorphic engravings. Although the exact function of the jars has never been conclusively determined, experts think they were part of prehistoric cremation burials. Evidence from Scottish Cranogs reveals what Neolithic people ate. Cereal cultivation and animal husbandry in Britain are known to date back to 4000 BCE, based on archaeobotanical and archaeozoological evidence. However, organic residues in pottery, which can tell scientists more about the culinary traditions of the ancient inhabitants of Britain, have hardly ever been looked into. That is until now. A recent study published in Nature analysed the residue from Neolithic pottery found in Scottish Cranogs, which date to between 3600 and 3300 BCE and found that cereals were often prepared alongside dairy products, meaning that a milk-based gruel was probably a significant part of the diet. Cranogs were artificial wooden buildings constructed in lakes and appear to have been used for both domestic and ritual purposes. Much of the pottery recovered for this study was found in the waters surrounding Cranogs, where it was possibly deposited ritually during communal feasts. The study is very complicated. What I'm giving you is a very rudimentary summary, so if you'd like to to read more I've put a link to the paper which is freely available in the description below. New research into Neolithic farming activities in Balbridi, Scotland. 30 years ago an early Neolithic timber hall was discovered in Balbridi, Scotland, the excavation of which was published in the journal Antiquity. A recent project analysed 20,000 cereal grains that were found at the site during the excavation and which had been preserved when the hall burnt down early in the 4th millennium BCE. When they were discovered, limited technology was available to investigate them further, so they were stored for future analysis. Stable isotope analysis was also carried out on archaeobotanical material from three other Neolithic sites, Skara Bray, Brace of Habrek and Dubton Farm. The study found that cereals were cultivated at Balbridi without the use of manure, which implies that the local soils were particularly fertile during that time. However, at the other sites, intensive manuring took place, which was also common in the rest of Neolithic Europe. Evidence for the storage of grains from different microenvironments and years at Balbridi and Brace of Harbrek suggests that Neolithic farmers created surpluses in case of crop failure and cooperated to this end with other households. This is also a very detailed paper, so if you'd like more information, it's an open access article which I've linked in the description below. Analysis of animal dung proves humans tamed animals before domesticating plants. Researchers analysing animal dung preserved alongside the dwellings of hunter-gatherers in Syria have found evidence for humans and animals living alongside each other between 12,800 and 12,300 years ago. This is 2,000 years earlier than previous evidence for animal domestication in the region. The study was carried out on dung spherulites excavated from the Abu Huraira site in the 1970s before the area was submerged beneath a lake. Experts had long thought that crop cultivation began first, but this new research indicates that small numbers of animals were kept outside domestic dwellings during the Epipaleolithic period, with dung being used as additional fuel for wood fires, and the animals were probably being used as live meat storage as well, when gazelles, which hunter-gatherers mostly ate, were low in numbers due to seasonal variability. So what do we think? The number of grave goods at the burial cave in Israel seems impressive, although I can't find any information on how many burials were found there or estimated to have once been interred there. We'll have to wait for the official excavation report. When these finds are made by chance, it always makes me think how many more incredible sites are waiting to be found. I'm really excited about the Shrub Lajin Temple. I visited the site last year, but as you can see, apart from a few scattered blocks of stone, which may or may not be prehistoric, anything else still remaining is buried. Plus, you cannot get close to the site anyway, because it's simply not safe due to the undercut cliff. So there are probably some other scattered blocks which are out of view. Here's the view from the path just before the site looking out to the sea. Certainly very atmospheric. The photographs and excavation report from the early 20th century show that quite some significant structures were found there. And the paper on the resurvey of the site that took place between 2012 and 2015 talks about another megalithic structure close by in a gully covered in dense vegetation. So it's a really interesting site. The story about the archaeobotanical analysis of pottery vessels at Scottish Cranogs 
got me thinking that I should really do a video on those structures. They are quite strange. Positioned as they are on the water, their seemingly impractical location, especially in bad weather, must have been offset by a more immensely practical or ceremonial benefit. I'll add it to the list. Anyway, thank you for joining. Please hit the like button. Let me know what you think of these stories and I'll see you next time.